We're going to move on to the PTV inlet now. Um, the PTV inlet is, has fast cooling and heating performance. It's designed to run at multiple ramps and a temperature controller, again, like split split, this is completely independent from GC oven. It's got three modes of operation, which we'll look into, and it has the large volume capability. So when you want to inject typically more than one or two microliters, probably the inlet goes. There are multiple different types of liners that you can use depending on techniques. So I'm not going to run through all these, but you've got the choice of baffled liners, sintered liners, or straight through metal liners. And offline, if anyone's got any questions, we'll go through which liner I would recommend for them. So the PTV can be used in a standard splitless mode. And when it's used in a splitless mode, it's slightly different to a split splitless inlet. The, the injection consists of three phases. You've got an injection phase, a transfer phase, and a cleaning phase. And the injection phase, this is when the injection is made, we set the temperature and we want the temperature to be 10 to 20 degrees less than the boiling point of the solvent. And the reason for this is we don't want the solvent to evaporate as it goes in. The time is going to be short, 0.05 to around 0.3 minutes, and there's no split flow. So literally all the flow is traveling down onto the separation column. Now we're going to transfer everything to our column. And so we're going to ramp up the inlet and while the split line is closed, and it's really important that this rate is controlled. So typically I'd recommend two and a half degrees a second. And the temperature we're going to go up needs to exceed the boiling point of the highest analyte of interest. So if your highest boiling point analyte of interest is 260, we need to be going up to 280, 300 degrees to make sure that, that is evaporating and transferring onto the column. And then time is like the split this time. And this is the time allowed to seal the complete transfer of components onto the column when the max temperature is reached and then the split line will be open just to vent the inlet. Like I said, the ramp speed is really important. Um, we've got a series of pesticides here, and when we run a ramp speed of two and a half degrees a second, we get really good at RSDs, less than 4%. But however, if we ramp this up too fast, we get much higher RSDs, and this is due to the fact that you're getting irreproducible expansion of the solvent, and um, you will lose some of the compounds via the split lines and things like that, because the solvent's just massively uh, evaporating in an uncontrolled manner. So always keep this uh, ramp speed down on the splitless injection. Finally, there's a cleaning phase. So this is something you don't have in a split splitless inlet. We can ramp that, temp that inlet temperature up to clean it and get rid of any high boilers. We don't care about the speed at which it heats up. So we typically go with our highest kind of settings. This would be around 14 and a half degrees a second. And we want to go to the maximum temperature to get rid of the residuals. Typically, we would set this to the maximum column temperature. It, this is the amount of time to assure complete elimination of the residuals, and this is based on your. I would base this on your runtime. So if your runtime is 15 minutes, you can easily have 10 minute kind of cleaning time because the inlet will be cooled down very quickly and be ready for your next injection. Um, the flow, um, this is the carry gas flow through the split line. And you want this to be high again, encouraging all of these non-volatiles to leave your inlet. So again, set this to around 70 to 80 millimeter. 